Hi, my name is Peter Rademeyer, and in this video we will be doing a project cash flow statement example. We will be discussing the project cash flow statement background, cash flow timing, cash flow distribution, and we will be doing an example. Now the cash flow statement represents the flow of money in and out of a project. It's got an income, the cash inflow, and an expenditure, the cash outflow, which is grouped together. The time frame is usually monthly, and the project cash flow statement layout will vary depending on the organization and project manager perspective. It can be stage payments or progress payments, part payments, monthly payments, upfront payments, cash on delivery, and you can also get your credit, a 30, 60 or 90 day credit. With regard to your income, your client income can be upfront payment or stage or progress payments, depending on your contractual arrangements. Expenses, some expenses might be labor, material, plant hire or other services. The labor is usually paid in the month of work. Material, you can pay upfront payments, cash on delivery or one to three month credit that you can get from your supplier. Plant hire, you normally give, need to give a deposit or it can be upfront payment or one to three months credit. Now with regard to cash flow distribution, on this slide, we've got activity A to activity F. Activity A represents your start or front end loaded activity. Activity B represents your finish or end loaded activity where payment is made towards the end of the activity. Activity C is pro rata or linear distribution where equal payments are made monthly. Activity D represents a one month upfront payment. So if the activity starts in July, you need to pay in June. Activity E represents your one month or 30 day credit. So if activity takes place in May, we need to pay in June. And activity F represents a two month or 60 day credit. If the activity takes place in March, payment is due in May. Now for example one, you are a project manager on a project and you need to prepare a project cash flow statement for the period January to June. The amount brought forward in January when the project commences is zero. And with regard to your project income, you submit monthly invoices to the client of $9,000 per month and the client pays one month after invoicing. Your first invoice is submitted in January and the last invoice is submitted in May. On your expense side, we've got labor, material and equipment. For labor, you employ labor at a cost of $4,000 per month and the payment is made in the month of work from January to June. Material, you procure material at $1,000 per month from January to May and you need to pay 40% in the month of procuring and the supplier gives one month credit for the 60%. Therefore, if you procure material in March, you pay 40% in March and 60% in April. And with regard to your equipment, you hire equipment at $1,200 per month from February to June and payment is required one month in advance. Now let's do the example. This is our typical layout of our project cash flow statement. The amount brought forward in January when the project commences is zero. So in January, the amount brought forward is zero. Our income on the project, we deliver invoices on a monthly basis of $9,000 per month from January to May. And the client pays your invoices one month after submission. Therefore, our January invoice will only be paid in February and our May invoice, the last one, will only be paid in June. Now on the expense side for labor, it's $4,000 per month and payment is made in the month of work. Therefore, from 
January to June, the payment is $4,000 per month. With regard to material, we procure $1,000 worth of material per month from January to May. We pay 40% in the month of procuring and the supplier gives us one month's credit for the remaining 60%. Therefore, in January, we only need to pay $400. For February, we need to pay the remaining $600 plus the $400 for procuring in February. So that's $1,000. And that will be the same for March, April and May. And then in June, we will only be paying the $600 of the one month credit from May. So that's in June, it's $600. Now with regard to equipment, the equipment is $1,200 per month for the hiring of equipment. We start to hire in February up until June and then the payment is required one month in advance. Therefore for hiring in February we need to pay in January and the hiring of equipment in June we pay in May. Now let's calculate our total expenses for January. The total expense is 4,000 plus 400 plus 1,200. It's 5,600. For February, it's 4,000 plus 1,000 plus 1,200. 6,200. And that's the same for March, April, and May. And in June, it's 4,000 plus 600. 4,600. Now, with regard to income, our total available income is the brought forward, which is zero. Plus your invoice payments for January is zero. Our total available is zero dollars. Our closing balance for January is the zero minus the 5,600. Our total expenses, it's minus 5,600. Then the amount brought forward for February is the minus 5,600 which is our closing balance for January. It's minus 5,600 plus our invoice payments of 9,000 gives us 3,400 minus our total expenses of 6,200 for February. It's minus 2,800. Balance brought forward for March is the minus 2,800 plus the 9,000 is 6. 1200 minus 6200 for our expenses closing balance for March is zero brought forward in April is therefore zero plus 9000 total available is 9000 minus 6200 2800 balance brought forward in May is 2800 plus 9000 our invoice payments total available is 11,800 minus 6,200, 5,600. Balance brought forward in June is 5,600 plus your 9,000 invoice payments. Total available is 14,600 minus 4,600. And our closing balance in June is positive 10,000, which means that this project will make a profit. Now, if this video was helpful, please like it or subscribe to my channel to receive more project management related videos.